It's never 100%. <laughs> All right, never say never. That's my prediction, though. It will never be 100%. Um, all right, so electric charge flow through the burner, increasing the thermal energy because of the resistance of the burner, is increasing the thermal energy of the burner. The power power to the burner as a function of time. The power is I squared R, so you might think it would just be constant. Sorry. The power to the burner is, is some big number, so you might think it would just be constant, but what happens? It is constant from electrical, the electrical part. I squared R is the power that's going into the burner all the time. So what happens to uh, the other, what happens to the burner is that the temperature goes up. <coughs> temperature of the room does not go up. So another, uh, another power shows up. And that's the power away from the burner. And so in the end, What's going to, you probably know what's going to happen. The power away from the burner is going to take energy away. And eventually, when the burner gets close to, when, when the burner gets very, very hot, I should, probably shouldn't have drawn this this way. It looks like it's supposed to be an exponential, and I'm not sure that it is. But anyway, um, the, the power eventually goes down to zero total power because there's electrical power coming in and an equal amount of uh, heat flow because of the temperature gradient going out. So there's energy coming in and energy going out. Those two flows complete, compete with each other. Yeah? Sorry, which, which power is going down? So the, the total is what I'm plotting here and that's what's going down. It, it's big for a while, let me actually try to draw this well. Let's say I turn the burner on right here. Then the power from electri the electrical circuit is something like that. As time goes on, the burner will get hot and you'll start to have power flowing away from it. Yeah. Uh, the electrical power is actually constant. No, 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 no. The dotted line is the electrical power, and so the energy coming into the burner from, uh, from, the, uh, from thermal energy, from electron flow, is that dotted line. It is a constant number. The total power is the sum of two things. The electrical power coming in, and then the total power is lower than that because when it starts to heat up, energy is coming out. So energy, when this drops below the dotted line, it's because energy is flowing out because of a temperature gradient. It's been 20 minutes and we're at 85. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, question? The y-axis there, what you're actually talking about, what you're drawing right now, is the power, total power of the system, or power to the system? I'm going to call it total power to the burner, because the electrons are delivering a constant amount of power, I squared R, to the burner, and something else is taking power away. And that something else is, is the, the temperature gradient, because the burner's hot. So there's heat flow away. As the burner gets hotter and hotter, the heat flow away gets bigger and bigger. So as it gets hotter and hotter, the heat flow gets bigger and bigger, and then it does something like that. And the total amount of power right here, then, the burner is as hot as it can get.
and the total power is constant, in fact zero, so that it doesn't get any hotter. There's, there's power coming in, the dotted line is the electrical power coming in, and the solid line down here at zero is the total power, so the electrical power coming in is canceled by the uh, heat flow due to the temperature gradient coming out, heat flow coming out. Um, so, even though I just drew this curve, I don't want you to necessarily, it's a complicated kind of a curve, and I, I don't want you to just, just memorize what this looks like. So, uh, I'll, I, I just ask it to get, to get you to think about what's going on in this problem when there are competing flows. When there are competing flows, you can reach an equilibrium because of them. And in biological problems, there are competing flows a lot. One kind of process leads to a, uh, another kind of process, which then at some point cancels that out. So I wanted to say just a little bit about, I'll call it storing energy. It turns out you can that you can store energy. And I think that PG&E actually does this, so I don't think it's that weird, uh, by essentially pumping water uphill. So that's what this picture shows. Uh, if you turn on, there's a, there's a valve down in the bottom that is closed. If, a, if a val This is a valve that's either open or closed, so if it's orient, if the handle is oriented this way, then it's closed, and when I flip it sideways, it'll be open. Right now, this valve is closed, so no water can flow through that little pipe. If you start with a pump on, off, just like this, water equal on both sides, A and B, you turn on the pump so it pumps water from B over to A. It's pumping water uphill. It's adding energy. The pump adds energy. What kind of energy? Gravitational potential energy. It's pumping water up a hill. So it's adding gravitational potential energy to the fluid system. If you turn the pump off then, so here the pump is off, now there's a bunch of water on one side. You know what will happen if I open this valve, because you've done this in class, what happens is that the water runs back again. You can get that energy back again. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're getting energy back here, because I just opened a valve. But what PG&E does is they don't just open a valve there, they put a turbine in there, and the water comes down, spins a turbine, produces electrical power, which you'll learn about in 7C, uh, produces electrical power, and then, and then you can use it. So, so you can get the energy back again once you've stored it, if it's water. Very similar problem is to giant metal plates. It turns out you can store electrons, you can store energy on two giant metal plates. You can, the best way to say this is not store electrons, the best way to say it is store energy or separate charge. I like to think of it as separating charge because what happens if you have two giant plates like this is that, well I'm going to close, so there, there's, I've set up a similar problem Except for some, whatever reason, I switched these two. So, so this is the resistor that was that little thing down below before, and now it's in the middle, and the battery has taken the place of the pump. The battery was above the little line before with the valve, and now the battery is, is below the resistor. So, s sorry about that. Uh, here I had the pump above and the, the little resistance below, and for some reason here I've put the pump below and the little resistance above. But anyway, it's the same issue. If I close S2, then this battery will push electrons onto those plates. Now, it, it doesn't quite do exactly that, it, but it's close. It pushes electrons. You know the negative side of the battery is pushing electrons out. It pushes, once S2 is closed, it pushes electrons around to A, so A will become negatively charged. The battery has two reactions going though. One end is pushing electrons, the other end is grabbing electrons. 
So this end eats a bunch of electrons, and where do those electrons come from? They come from plate B. So A ends up negatively charged because the negative side of the battery is pushing electrons that way. B ends up positively charged because the positive side of the battery has pulled electrons away from it. So there's extra pro protons around on B. I didn't move positive charge to B. Positive charge is in, is, is in protons, it's in nuclei, and it's bound up in crystals and stuff. So it doesn't move around like electrons can. So I didn't move positive charge over to B, I took electrons away from B. <coughs> then if you open the switches again, here you have a bunch of electrons, extra electrons on one side, an extra positive charge on the other. You know that, I think you know, that negative and positive charges attract each other. So, so they would like, they are, it took energy from the battery to separate those charge. Just like when I pumped water from one side to the other, I gave the, the water extra energy. Now these charges have extra energy and I can get that back again. And the way I get it back is the same way I did before. Forget about this battery now, just close switch number one, and what will happen? These electrons get pushed around back over to here again, and in doing that, they light up a light bulb. So you can get that energy back again. Same way that we did for the pump. <coughs>